All right, so now we're going to talk about pre-operation preparation for the Eco 7000 and getting the unit ready for operation, walking through, checking uh, the oils and the pump and the engine, walking through the startup and operation procedures. First, when the Eco 7000 is unpacked, there are several components that have to be installed onto the unit. Um, in the box, there is a 50-foot blue 2-inch vacuum hose that stores beneath the back of the unit in a compartment. In order to get this hose completely in the compartment, it must be laced in and twisted as it is installed as tight as possible in order to fit all of the hose into the compartment. Once the hose is in the compartment, the suction scupper that goes to the end of the hose can also be installed, placed and stored in this compartment. The compartment can be closed and locked with a screwdriver at the back latch. Next in the box, there is a receiver for the plug for the trailer that's supplied that can be installed on the vehicle that's going to pull the trailer that will connect directly to the electrical brakes and lights plug. Uh, on the end of the unit. There's also a spark plug wrench that comes to check the spark plug on the uh, Honda GS690 engine and an extra set of keys for the cabinet doors on the control portion of the unit. That can be stored in the unit or mounted onto the truck that's going to pull the machine. The Eco 7000 wash recovery unit comes with an operator's manual. It comes with uh, an engine manual, GS, GS 690 engine manual, and warranty information that can all be used to reference any questions that need to be referenced by the operator or by the maintenance individuals. Okay, so in the packet of uh, extra parts, uh, for the Eco 7000 comes a uh, mesh bag with oil absorbent material that is designed to absorb oils and greases from the water that's recovered and comes into the vacuum system. This bag is designed to just hang in the back of the tank via a carabiner and it's very easy to install. Simply pull the tabs, the rubber holding tabs off of the top of the suction device, pull out the mesh bag, filter bag, and at the back of the tank, below the suction motor, inside there is an eye hook. It can be accessed and felt right toward the back corner of the tank. Simply drop the mesh bag down into the suction tank. needs to go to the back of the tank behind the float switch and with the carabiner open, clip it onto the eye hook at the top of the back of the unit and push the bag back into the corner, the back corner of the tank. Then replace the suction lid with the filter mesh sock and clip the tie downs back on. Okay, so the, the Eco 7000 comes equipped with two hose reels. The hose reel on the bottom is designed for a three quarter inch garden hose up to 100 feet that can be used 
to roll out, connect to a spigot, and fill the tanks from a remote location. This hose is going to need to, need to be provided by the operator. The Eco 7000 has a pressure hose reel, pressure out, and the pressure hose provided is a 50 foot high pressure two wire braid 6000 psi hose. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate how to attach and wind up the pressure hose on the top hose reel. The pressure hose comes with two red protective rubber sleeves. One of them is a 24 inch sleeve and one is a 10 inch sleeve. It's important to be sure that the longer of the sleeves, the 24 inch sleeve, is the sleeve that is left out and that the shorter sleeve is the one that is mounted first to the hose reel. The easiest way to attach this hose is first to extend the hose out, unravel the hose and straighten it out in a straight line due to the wire braids behind the unit. So once this hose is stretched out and straightened out behind the unit, again, the short rubber protector on the end going into the hose reel needs to be laced through the guide on the hose reel, the center of the guide, through the side hole on the hose reel, and needs to be threaded into a fitting on the hose reel swivel. Before this is threaded in, take and wrap the threads with several wraps of the Teflon tape that comes in the packet with the unit. Once wrapped, the end goes into the fitting. and thread it in a clockwise look direction. Hand thread as the wire braid hose spins. Hand tight. And then finish off with several turns of an adjustable or similar wrench to a snug position. Finally, move the rubber protector up and over the fitting up to and against the 45 degree elbow. The hose can be drawn through the side hole of the hose reel to reveal a small hole at the top of the hose reel, directly opposite the handle. This is where the clamp that holds the hose together on the hose reel is attached. The clamp goes on. A small screw with a hex head insert and nut are installed by putting the screw through the back of the hose reel, the side where the hose is going to be, okay so once the uh, hose uh, keeper is in place, the nut and the bolt is tight, then on the opposite side of the hose reel is a locking mechanism. There is a pin and a loop that can be pulled out and turned a quarter of a turn that can lock or quarter turn to release the hose reel. That pin needs to be released and put in a horizontal position and the hose can then be wound up via the handle on the side to bring the hose all the way into the hose reel. Once the hose has been installed, the locking mechanism can be set so the hose reel doesn't turn and the hose can be attached to the quick coupler plug to keep it from hanging off of the trailer.
Next, we're going to talk about winding a garden hose, supplied by the operator. The garden hose, similar to the pressure hose, has a garden hose fitting on the right hand side where the uh, handle is at. There's also a keeper loop that first needs to be removed off of the hose reel. To be installed on the garden hose once the garden hose is installed onto the hose reel. All right, to install the garden hose, again, simply place the garden hose through the guide at the front of the hose reel and then through the side of the hole on the side of the hose reel and thread the end onto the hose fitting. This can be done hand tight. The hose can also be drawn through and the keeper clamp can be installed similar to that installed on the pressure hose above. So once the ho garden hose is attached and the retaining loop is on, again, the locking mechanism can be released at the back of the hose reel and the hose can be wound up onto the reel for storage. Okay, so the Eco 7000 comes with a dual lance wand and a variable pressure needle valve that opens up the second tube to lower the pressure. It comes with a trigger gun and it comes with a nipple that all need to be put together. Simply take the uh, supplied uh, Teflon tape and wrap the threads of the fittings in a direction that goes the same with threading them on in a clockwise direction. Insert the fittings and they can be tightened then with wrench. Also the wand, the threads at the end of the wand can be wrapped clockwise with the threading pattern four to five turns with Teflon tape and the wand and trigger gun can be threaded together. The trigger gun then is ready to be attached to the quick coupler fitting at the end of the pressure hose for operation. Okay, so now that the uh, trigger gun and variable lance wand are put together with the nipple, the hose at the end of the washer can be released can be pulled out and can be installed, clipped onto the back of the pressure wand. Also, the nozzles that are available with the Eco 7000 are stored at the base of the top hose reel. The red nozzle is a zero degree red nozzle, the yellow nozzle is a 15 degree spray pattern, the green nozzle is a 25 degree spray pattern, and the white nozzle is a 40 degree spray pattern. Choose the nozzle that the operator wishes to use and install it in the quick coupler fitting at the end of the dual lance wand. So prior to operating the Eco 7000 wash trailer, it's important to go through several uh, checks uh, of the fluids in the unit. Uh, the Honda GX660 engine has a dipstick for oil check at the back of the unit through the galley. That dipstick can be removed and the oil can be checked and can be installed back in prior to operation. It's important to check the oils in the engine and in the pump prior to each operation. At the top right hand side of the back end of the pressure washer is the battery box. Prior to operating the Eco 7000, a 12 volt 
deep cycle battery must be installed inside of the battery box provided by the operator. The battery simply sits into the box and the red lead is attached to the positive lead side of the battery. The black ground lead is attached to the negative lead side of the battery. Once installed, the top can be returned into place and the keeper strap can be laced underneath the battery box. So when servicing the engine oil on the Honda GX660 engine, right next to the dipstick oil, uh, dipstick uh, measuring line is the fill oil fill cap that can be removed from the back of the pressure washer. This cap comes off and changing the oil, the new oil can be inserted into that cap. So back here at the back of the pressure washer you will find a fuel filter assembly that filters the diesel fuel that runs into the burner system and supplies the burner with fuel for the heat. Below the fuel filter, this needs to be checked to make sure that it's clean. There is a clean out drain at the bottom, a, a water separator drain at the bottom, and this filter can be replaced occasionally when need be due to contamination of fuel. Below the fuel filter is the generator that generates the 120 volt power to operate much of the other components on the unit. At the top of the tanks, water tanks, each of the tanks, there is a clear plastic see-through lid that can be removed to inspect the inside of each of the water tanks. Inspect for debris that might need to be cleaned out of the tanks and they can be inspected for water levels inside the tanks. They can also be used to fill the water tanks from outside. At the front of the Eco 7000 uh, wash trailer, recovery trailer, there is a panel, access panel for maintenance of the pump and unloader valve that can be removed with eight bolts. That should be removed and prior to operation, the oil in the LT6036 pump needs to be checked. The top of the pump is an oil check dipstick it also can be used for a fill location. The oil in the pump only needs to be approximately halfway between the two knobs on the oil dipstick. It does not need to be completely full of oil. It runs halfway full of oil and that can be measured on that dipstick. When it comes to maintaining the LT6036L.2 pump, for draining the oil, there are two drain hoses at the front of the Eco 7000 wash trailer unit. One hose drains the oil from the pump when it needs to be changed. The second hose drains the oil from the engine when that needs to be changed. Directly behind the pump and between the Honda GX660 engine is a filter, oil filter, that is very easily accessible from this front panel location. When changing the oil in the GS660 Honda engine, it is important to remove and replace this oil filter at the same time. So now we're going to go into the startup procedures to start the pressure washer on the Eco 7000 trailer. Prior to starting up the pressure washer, it is imperatively important that the operator review the manual, the operator's manual, and read pages 16 through 22. They go into assembly, startup, and operation of the pressure washer. It, it talks about the switches and the valves that need to be uh, adjusted, and I'll walk through that at this time. Once the operator has reviewed the manual, to start up the Eco 7000, simply unlock the control panel door, and inside the control panel, we'll start with the valve system. 
the two outer tanks on the pressure washer should be full of water to start. These are the outer tanks. The valve for the outer tank should be pushed into the on position. This will allow the water from the outer tanks that are equalized to feed the pressure washer. The inner tank valve can be left in the off position. The bypass valve can be in either position. It doesn't matter. They can bypass back to the inner tanks or to the outer tanks. In this case, we'll start with the bypass valve in the inner tank position. When we're ready to start up the machine, we will roll the hose off of the hose reel, have the trigger gun and nozzles attached. We will come to the control panel of the machine and we will pull the choke to start the engine. We will turn the key to start the Honda GX660 engine and get the engine started. After several minutes of warming up, the choke can be pushed back in and the unit will level out and run at, at full speed. There is no throttle control on the Eco 7000 pressure washer. It is imperatively important that the throttle on this pressure washer always run at high speed. There's no need to throttle down. Once the engine is running, the trigger can be pulled and the pressure washer will deliver pressure out the end of the hose. The first time this is done, it will take several minutes for the water to get from the water tanks through all of the lines into the pressure washer and through the coil and out the hose. It's important that the first time this is, this is done to remove the trigger gun from the hose and let the hose lay on the ground and run the unit until clear water comes out the end of the hose. Once water is running out the end of the hose, the operator can turn off the pressure washer engine, let the pressure die down at the hose, attach the hose to the trigger gun, and come back and restart the engine. Then it's, he's ready to wash. Once the pressure washer is running and the operator has pressure at the end of the wand, the, the, the operator can come and turn the burner switch to the on position. When the burner switch is in the on position, the burner mechanism on the back of the pressure washer will start up, the motor will begin to turn, and airflow will begin to come out of the exhaust ports on top of the pressure washer. There will not be any heat until the operator turns the dial, temperature dial, and from the off position to the desired temperature. Simply turn that dial to the, to the desired temperature and the heater will then begin to operate. Again, the first time that this pressure washer heater is operated, it may take several minutes for the fuel system to clear all of the lines and get to the burner nozzle in the burner. So give it a few minutes and then the burner should fire. If the burner be does not begin to fire after several minutes, it is important to turn off the unit, turn off the switch, and reference the operator's manual or the troubleshooting manual at any time that happens. Once the operator is washing with or without heat, it doesn't matter, then the next operation would be the vacuum pump. In a moment, we're going to walk through connecting the vacuum hose. When the vacuum ho hose is, is connected to the flat surface cleaner or to the suction scupper, simply turning on the vacuum switch will start the vacuum pump and begin the suction of the used contaminated water through the two inch vacuum hose and into the vacuum tank. As the vacuum hose continues to suck water into the vacuum tank, it will continue to do so until the vacuum tank reaches a maximum level and the float switch in the vacuum tank shuts the vacuum off. When the vacuum quits sucking, then the operator can come to the control panel and turn on the reclaim pump switch. The reclaim pump switch then will start to process the water out of the vacuum tank through the filtering system and back into the center set of tanks 
on the wash unit. Once the vacuum tank has been emptied by the reclaim pump, the switch in the, re in, in the vacuum tank will then shut off the reclaim pump. These can be left in an on position while operating or they can be operated manual, manually by the operator as he chooses to do so.